I know of. Well, good afternoon, and thanks everybody for coming out today. Uh, pleased to uh, uh, press conference. Obviously, we're going to unveil the Agriculture and Nutrition Act of 2018. Will be uh, dropped in the bucket across the street here uh, shortly. Uh, it will be designated as HR 2, uh, in uh, in reference to just how important uh, the leadership believes that uh, getting this bill passed is. It'll be right after the tax reform bill, which was HR HR 1. Uh, this will be HR2, and so we're looking forward to uh, starting that process of having the broader conversation with the American people, what we're actually doing, as opposed to much of the misinformation that might be in the arena today. 116 hearings, uh, three years worth of work, six listening sessions across the country, untold number of hours uh, put in by uh, both sides of the committee trying to get to this, <clears throat> to this point. You set aside the SNAP portion. Uh, the rest of the Farm Bill is reflective of the normal uh, traditional bipartisan work that this committee has always been known for. Uh, all of the priorities that Peterson had in the bill, that all of my Democrat colleagues worked so hard <clears throat> to craft and put in the bill, those stayed in the bill uh, after the Democrats decided they did not want to negotiate on SNAP. Uh, so <clears throat> except for the SNAP part portion, this is a bipartisan bill, and uh, and look forward to uh, having my colleagues on both sides of the aisle talk about the things that are in the bill that they champion on behalf of the folks that they represent back home uh, moving forward. The problem, though, is that, that as Yogi Berra said, when you get to a fork in the road, you take it. Um, last month, we came to a fork in the road, and um, my Democrat colleagues decided that uh, they wanted to do something or nothing on SNAP. Uh, that's unacceptable for my team, and so we are moving forward to, uh, to get this bill done. We'll be on the House uh, Committee, Market Up Committee next week to, uh, uh, to move the process forward and then be uh, on the floor as quickly thereafter as we can. Some of that obviously will be dictated by all the other things that are going on with respect to the House, uh, but also trying to find those 218 votes that uh, they're going to need to pass this bill. Um, I'm agnostic as to whether those are Democrat votes or Republican votes. Uh, when we stand on the floor and those red light greens, red and, red and green lights go up on the, on, the, on the wall, they are red or green depending on whether or not you're supportive of trying to address uh, a farm economy and a farm rural America that has suffered through the worst drop in production income in the last five years, a 50% drop. Uh, you're going to stand with those SNAP families who deserve a, a better way out, a break in the poverty cycle that they're going on, uh, or you're going to stand with them. And it's a pretty clear-cut choice. Those red, light, those red lights and green lights won't be designated as Republicans or Democrats. They're just where do you stand with rural America with respect to this important piece of legislation. On the SNAP side, uh, we believe that breaking this poverty cycle uh, is really important. It's pretty rare in my experience here in Congress where policy drives the train. Typically, CBO drives it with the number that they assess when it's out there, and you've got to fit your policy into that number. Three years ago, uh, the committee, subcommittee led by Jackie Walorski at the time and G.T. Thompson today, uh, set out with a clean, patient, clean sheet of paper. What should SNAP look like? How should we, what's the best policy that we could put in place to affect uh, getting folks uh, back on their own two feet and off these programs? Didn't talk about spending, didn't talk about what it might cost. What, just That was not a part of the conversation. We wanted to know the best policy. Of course, you have to consider the cost, and so at some point, we got it scored. The score came in zero, which was the commitment uh, to uh, to the system that we would not would get no new resources, nor would we have to come up with additional savings beyond the 112 billion that's already baked into the baseline. Uh, and so we've got that best policy we believe forward to, to put forward. And I'm looking uh, excited about having that detailed conversation uh, with the American people about just exactly what it is that we're trying to accomplish uh, with uh, with respect to our uh, SNAP reform. So uh, now I turn to my uh, uh, vice chairman of the committee, but more importantly. The, the chairman of the subcommittee on nutrition for comments that he might have, and then we'll be ready for your questions. GT. Chairman, thank you so much. Thank you for everybody for coming out as uh, we launch this today. You know, uh, specifically we're here to talk about uh, Title IV, which is uh, the nutrition title. And thanks. It takes a village. I appreciate that. <laughs> this chairman always got my back. Uh, you know, I frequently say that uh, I, I 
I grew up, I live in, in, in rural America, and one of the things I talk about is the worst thing about living in rural America is everybody knows your business. Those of you who grew up in rural America know what I mean. Uh, you do something when you're out, run around, you're, as, a, as a kid, you're playing, and your parents know it by the time you get back. But the best part about living in rural America is everybody knows your business because neighbors look out for neighbors. You know, that's what the nutrition title is. That's what it is to me. It's about helping our neighbors in need. It's about helping those who are struggling, uh, uh, who are living with disabilities, uh, those who are uh, older adults, uh, those who are children, um, that, uh, uh, to, to make sure that uh, they have the access to the nutritional support uh, that they need to have. And, and for those folks actually in this Title IV, uh, I won't say nothing changes because I think we make some significant improvements, but we don't take, we're not taking anything away. Uh, we're, uh, uh, we're actually not doing things to people, we're doing things for people. You know, for uh, probably 35, about 35% 35 of the folks that are on the SNAP title, they're there because of economic reasons. Uh, whether it's bad luck, bad decisions, uh, life circumstances, they find themselves financially uh, in, in distress, and, and uh, they need that financial assistance, but they also need on-ramps to opportunity. So I'm, I'm, I'm very pleased. I really appreciate the chairman's leadership. We've done, uh, this is my second farm bill to participate in, but this one has been uh, comprehensive in terms of the number of hearings, uh, over 20 hearings alone on nutrition, over 80 witnesses, uh, over a span of four years, um, and, and bringing people to the table, stakeholders to the table. And I don't think there's anything you're going to see in this uh, as you uh, read the text and hear about the bill that hasn't really um, been a part of those hearings uh, and, and been and brought out. So I'm real pleased uh, that we, we've got uh, uh, a nutrition title that really does uh, help our neighbors in need. Uh, it does that, I think, in an improved manner. It creates some on-ramps to opportunity through some workforce solutions, but it also addresses some program integrity uh, issues that we need to do. And, and uh, the, the cold part is we plow any savings we can find through program integrity or, or plowed right back into the nutrition title of helping those neighbors in need. And, uh, and quality of food uh, is also improved as well. So uh, I'm uh, very appreciative to the leadership uh, that the chairman and all members of, of the, this committee, uh, quite frankly, on both sides of the aisle, we had a bipartisan, great bipartisan participation with all these hearings uh, that we've conducted. And so I think the product that you'll, uh, we uh, roll out today is a, is a reflection of, of really great bipartisan work. So I'm, I'm hoping for a bipartisan effort going forward as well. So, thanks, GT. With that, we uh, happy to entertain questions. I'm, I'm pleased to be joined by many of my colleagues here, and so if uh, they want to weigh in on a question, just let me know. Yes, sir. Chairman Conway, the USDA is looking at uh, letting states do drug testing as a condition of eligibility for SNAP. Is that fit with your agenda in this bill? Uh, it's not in the bill base text, although we have uh, some members on the committee who are keenly interested in that. And so uh, either part of the, the committee process next week or on the floor, we'll have, be able to have a fulsome conversation about does that work or does that not work. Uh, have not, I've not had any conversation with Sonny Perdue about it, but I have great respect for him uh, as our Secretary of, of uh, Agriculture, and so look forward to, uh, to having his thoughts on, uh, on that issue. But th nothing is in the base bill with respect to uh, drug testing. Yeah. Well, there are, uh, this bill is a work in progress. Uh, on, on every stage, whether it's in committee next week, on the floor, uh, or in conferences. So yeah, there'll be opportunities for amendments. I'm not so arrogant or, or uh, uh, stupid as to think that uh, this bill will survive intact as is. It's a work in progress, and so we're always open for conversation. Yes, ma'am. What's the baseline cost? Uh, <clears throat> uh, we'll get that. We'll have that in the next day or so from the uh, uh, from CBO, but it's uh, it's 112 less than what the 14 bill uh, uh, would have scored. 112, 112 billion less, and we were able to, to, the agreement I made with leadership <clears throat> is that I did not have to find any additional savings, nor did I get any new money uh, in, the, uh, in the bill itself. So we're, uh, we're flat against the baseline. Can I follow up on that? I'm yes. Has that top line spending changed No, not from the baseline. We keep everything within SNAP. 756, Say again. No, the CBO has an estimate of what the next 10 years look like, and that number is what we're living with. It's 112 less than what the, when, than they did it in 14. So we're living in that. It's not the, It's whatever the base. Whatever the CBO baseline that came out Monday, we'd live within that number. 
Yes, sir. Yeah, um, yeah we were, we're in the process of doing, I can't do anything about the amount of number of days and all that kind of goes, that's just a calendar and it's gonna happen whether we sit on our thumbs or you know, sit on our fists and lean back on our thumb and wait for the, for the next big event. We're gonna move this forward. With whatever time frame I've got, I'm gonna work it as hard as I can to get this thing done. As I said earlier, <clears throat> the, the votes that go up, the red and green votes on that, that board across the street don't have uh, party tags on them. I need 218 to 217 if we were fully complimented and that kind of deal. So I'm gonna work real hard to make that happen. I believe we've got a bill that does that. On the, as I said, on the non-SNAP title, it is pure bipartisan. Uh, <clears throat> we didn't do anything after the Democrats went to the sidelines uh, on SNAP to, to affect that. I didn't punish anybody, I didn't take it out on anybody, we left it. The commitments I'd made to Colin and the other folks uh, for, the, what, for what they wanted in the non-SNAP portion is there. I believe the SNAP policy will stand on its own. I believe the wisdom of it will be become readily apparent the more and more people look at it, and that will then draw the folks to, uh, to a yes that need to get there. But, you know, we all get 24 hours a day. We've got a certain number of days. We're now September 30th. I'm driven to get to uh, <clears throat> get there. The folks in, in uh, rural America, production income, production, uh, uh, ag, uh, production industries, they don't like the drama of short-term extensions or expirations any more than I do. In fact, even less than I do. They deserve the certainty of knowing what the next five years is going to look like. Right, wrong, or different, they need to know what that next five years look like. And I'm, I'm driven to make that happen. Chairman, can I speak to the sure. bureaucracy question? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, please. I, I, that's one of the myths, actually, that I, that I hear as well. That's going to create low, new levels of bureaucracy. And that's not what it does. This is actually, this is out reaching out to people who find themselves in fina financially challenging circumstances because of unemployment, underemployment, maybe intergenerational poverty. So this, this is actually, this is not going to bureaucracy, this is connecting with those folks. And, and it really, uh, it builds on, uh, sig um, there's a significant portion of education and training dollars uh, that we're gonna, utilize the Workforce Innovation Opportunity Act, which is already in place. Uh, that, does, um, that provides job training today in both urban America and rural America. Those, those resources are in place in, in all counties in, and uh, to be able to service people who are, who are looking for positions. They're actually a great bridge because they are, the way they were, when we did that reauthorization out of the Education Workforce Committee, that connected the employers, the people needing uh, folks who are qualified and trained with the people who are in need of a job. Uh, but this also reaches out to other stakeholders that we have, whether it's uh, through uh, um, uh, the commercial industries, private industries, apprenticeships, uh, community colleges. Uh, this, uh, this is a farm bill, like most farm teams are a strong team. You have a diverse team working a farm. This farm bill utilizes a diverse team of existing resources in order to mobilize that education and training. Yeah, if we were gonna come in here and create a whole, never, whole new level of bureaucracy, there's nobody standing up here that would vote for that. Uh, but that's not what this does. This is a smart farm bill as well, in terms of how do we get to these education outcome, training outcomes. And, Providing people, folks, that, that safety net of food security, which is so important. But more than that, what they need is a, is a chance at the American dream, an on-road opportunity, and that comes through skills-based education, career and technical education, that type of training. Why aren't you holding it? <laughs> oh, no. Um, no, this is just one I first one I picked up at the, 
I, I got dressed this morning in the dark, but I didn't want to wake my wife up, so this was the tie I pulled. <clears throat> That's what I do too. Yeah, um, you had a little better choice than I did, baby. But uh, now the, the premise is you've got uh, work capable folks from 18 to 59 that have some skills or no skills that are unemployed. And you have a growing economy that have jobs coming available that have skills that are necessary. And we simply want to bridge that gap with federal resources. As GT said, uh, the states are already in this business, uh, but we're going to provide more resources to make that more fulsome. It's going to be case management. It's going to be assessments to decide uh, what people need to actually get them to, uh, to those next step up. Uh, and again, we're not talking about uh, anybody under 18. We're not talking about the mentally or physically disabled. We're not talking about anybody over 59. Not talking about a caregiver of a six-year-old or younger. Those folks are not affected by what we're doing. And so <clears throat> the idea that we can um, to bridge that gap between the, the skills that folks have versus what they need to get this, uh, the, these new jobs, it's coming at a great time, quite frankly, from, a, from an economy standpoint, because new jobs are getting created every single day. Their, their wages are higher because there's competition for employees. So we think this uh, is a great time to, to dedicate significant resources toward the, uh, the uh, ENT portion of, uh, of the SNAP program. Yes, sir. So the uh, um, conservation title is uh, undergoing a few changes. We're going to uh, adjust payment rates on <clears throat> the CRP program. Going to fold the CSP program uh, into, um, it'll go away on, under naturally. You know, the existing contracts will run off. We're going to re redeploy that money into EQUIP because we believe it's a better uh, use of federal taxpayer dollars. But any current existing CSP contract will be honored. There just won't be any new ones under the new farm bill. Yes, sir. Uh, yesterday you mentioned that um, there would be protections for farmers from uh, retaliation that China is considering to use in the administration of trade action. You said that this, this farm bill would be repackaged, nothing new. Um, I was wondering if you could explain a little bit more how that would happen. So the, the, those, those near-term emergency protections <coughs> were revitalized. Re, uh, with a supplemental uh, under Section 32 for Sunny Purdue to be able to use. So the Secretary of Ag will be able to, to be more nimble uh, with respect to that, and that's already in place. That's unrelated here. What we do in our title with respect to trade, just to try to create baseline for those uh, market access program, the foreign market development programs, those really important programs that help uh, sell American products around the world. Um, the French spend more on peddling French wine uh, than we spend on our entire program. And so these are important market development, foreign market development programs that we package together to try to get big enough collectively that they can then we ascribe baseline to those so that we don't have to have this fight every single time. So those are the programs that we're going to try to extend. And uh, Senator Roberts also mentioned today that um, he's, been, he's heard President Trump talk about the need So I've just come from a trip to uh, <clears throat> uh, Chile and uh, Ecuador and Colombia. Uh, they would like us to engage directly. I think President Trump wants to do it on a bilateral basis. Um, whichever way, uh, time is of the essence because uh, these markets are being or this vacuum that America <clears throat> created by stepping away from TPP is being filled by uh, EU, Russia, China, Australia, and others. And so we need to be at the table. And uh, if the president prefers bilateral, fantastic, fantastic. But the quicker we get that work started, the better. Yes, ma'am. So we're not sure about that total number to be served. We just know that that work capable group, uh, each state will come to grips with their uh, their problem. They'll create that plan that'll be cleared by uh, by the uh, by the president by the uh, uh, Department of Agriculture uh, to move it forward and how that make that uh, make work. Um, the the uh, um, with respect to data, we're going to create a national database <clears throat> of everybody on SNAP. Today, I can't tell you who's on SNAP. Uh, the East state can tell you that, but we can't tell you that from the national standpoint. We need that database to be able to understand the dynamics of what happens. Right now, if somebody were to ask you what's the average, life, the average span of someone staying on SNAP or how often they come and go on SNAP, 
That's a makeup number. Nobody can really give you that good data. So we're going to create the database. It'll also assist us with um, fraud that's occurring where people try to qualify for SNAP in two different states close to each other. Uh, we could not, uh, f we couldn't ferret that out now. So this national data database will be <clears throat> created to give us the kinds of answers that we want to do. In the meantime, uh, we believe that the program we're putting forth does make sense. It's not, they're not plowing new ground per se. We're trying to uh, harvest on the existing programs that may not have the resources that they need to make them work. And we're going to provide those national resources to make it happen. But to sit around and wait for something uh, and continue with this process that we don't believe works, uh, I think is irresponsible and it does a disservice to the folks that are, that uh, could be helped as a part of these changes. I think you measure success one person at a time. We had a wonderful uh, comment later on one of our listening sessions. A really brave young lady stood at the microphone and said, I'm the reason you need to keep SNAP in place. She said, I was an 18-year-old uh, single mom of a three-year-old, and I didn't like my future, and I wanted to go to college. And with SNAP and these other benefits, I got to go to college. My hard work, sweat equity, I got a college degree. I, I uh, became a teacher, I now have a master's degree, I'm an administrator, and for me and my daughter, public assistance is measured by what we do for other people, not what's done for us. That's the success story that we want to drive. Every American I know of would support a program that leads to those kind of end results, and that's where we're headed. And it's, uh, you know, you can't fix everybody all at once, you fix them one at a time. And so for me, the success is how quickly people get off the program, back on their own two feet, taking care of their own family, making their own money, uh, moving forward in, uh, into society the way we'd, we'd all like for them to. Uh, yes, sir. Anecdotally, we believe that's the case, but if we get this database done, we will know. Is there a time frame about when that database is going to be up and running? Not, no, not yet. I got to get it passed first, so there's, you know, it'll take how long it takes. But um, data. yeah, it's just data that's already there. We just need to collect it all in one spot. In other words, states know who's on the SNAP and not. We need that data in one spot so that we can analyze it at the USDA to make that happen. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm from West Texas, and I'm internally optimistic about everything. Uh, you have to be to live in West Texas. And so I'm hopeful that between now and uh, next Wednesday morning at 10 o'clock, the, the language, the actual what we're trying to do and how we're trying to do it, the, the more people understand about it, then, then maybe some of the things that they were anxious about get cured and we move forward. 10 o'clock, the gavel will go down. We get a, we get a majority of the committee here. We get a quorum. We're going to move forward uh, through the markup process. It'll be deliberate. Uh, we'll have amendments that will be uh, in order through next uh, Monday afternoon. So all the amendments that people want to put in, we'll thoughtfully consider each one of those. We'll just do the markup process. And if it takes till late into the night, Wednesday night, we'll come back early Thursday morning. Well, it takes late in the night, Thursday night, we'll come back early Friday morning, but we're going to get this out of committee. Chairman, can I speak to how we sure. reinvest with okay. fraud and abuse? Um, um, you know, we're, what we're doing with fraud and abuse really isn't, um, you know, some people may look at that and say, this is just about saving money. This has never been about the money. This has been about the right policy. And with, the, with fraud and abuse, with better program integrity, we're going to take and significantly increase the amount of money that the states can retain when they use these tools to discover fraud and abuse. They're going to be able to retain that. We're going to require them to reinvest it, though, back into the nutrition program, looking at improving their technology, their integrity. I mean, it's uh, uh, so this isn't, you know, the any any savings from fraud and abuse is going to be, you know, reinvested right back into the nutrition title for uh, really for program integrity and, and by the states to help the states do that. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Well, given the fact that I had no new money uh, and that everything we had to do stayed to stay within that, uh, that zero baseline, and the fact that the ranking member and I negotiated all of those changes in advance of last, uh, last month's uh, SNAP issue, 
Uh, I have to. I haven't had any conversations with him since then. Uh, certainly, if there was more money available, we would have been able to do other things. But that wasn't the, that wasn't the mission. It never was the mission. The ranking member didn't bring it up throughout the four years we've been having these hearings until uh, two weeks ago. Um, but uh, we're I, we did the best we can within the number that I was allowed to stick with, and we stick with that number. Yes, sir. So, Jerry, what I heard you say is that his members are willing to look their producers in the eye and tell them that we want to, we're supportive of decimating crop insurance, we're supportive of losing the sugar program, we're supportive of all those negative things you just said to me in order to punish Conaway. I don't want to go home and have that conversation. Well, then... I, that's not much I don't have leverage on them, Jerry. I'm not going to, I'm not going to, uh, you know, those folks are going to have to tell Production America, Rural America, who, by the way, um, those, rural, those urban guys are really dependent on stuff that goes on in rural America. Their voters enjoy the safest, most abundant, and affordable food and survivor supply of any developed nation in the world. So, yes, anybody who eats ought to be really in favor of good agriculture programs, whether you live in a big city or not. And so, well, no vote or a vote to support stripping out sugar, or a vote to support uh, decimating crop insurance, which is what I guess Mr. Peterson is saying they intend to do, makes no sense whatsoever in the grand scheme of things. So if that's a line that they want to go down, I can't fix their problems. I just know that we're going to move forward with this bill and get it done as best we can. Uh, make sure everybody gets, if you ask a question, Jeff. Again, I get, well, I've got one voting card that I get to use. Every member gets to decide from themselves how they want to use that card. And if they intend to use the card to punish Conaway because they don't like the snap deal he did, I got it. But they've got to go home and justify that to their folks. And so I don't, I've done nothing specifically to flush the Democrats off this bill. We left all of those provisions in the non-SNAP title exactly the way we had negotiated with Peterson and his team. And if they want to decimate that to punish me for something, I got it. But that's their deal. They got to go home and, and, uh, and, and defend that nonsense. Yes, ma'am. So the, I get paid mostly to get stuff through the House. Um, <laughs> and so my focus is getting the bill through the committee next week, then through the House. I've been in conversations throughout this whole process with Pat. He wants to get a bill done as well. We're going to go the old regular order thing. I know it's a bit passe and, and, uh, and unpopular, but he's going to get a bill out of the Senate, and then we're going to conference. Uh, he'll be the chairman of the conference committee because Lucas was last time. That's just the way this deal works. I said earlier, I'm not so naive to think that my bill will survive the whole process. It's a work in progress. So I'm confident that Pat will lead in the Senate to get a bill done. We'll go to conference, and then we'll work out these differences. Anybody else? Well, again, thanks, everybody. We'll, uh, the bill text will be available shortly with all the other information that uh, we're going to put out to everyone. Uh, Markup will be at 10 o'clock in this room next week. And um, the, the 100, say again? Wednesday. Wednesday, Wednesday after, uh, week from yesterday. And be on time. Yeah, we'll. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. We're adjourned. <laughs>